So regardless of whether you're designing a mobile web, a responsive site, which we'll talk about in a little bit, or an app, right? You need to think about um, the following key principles, right? You should always be simplifying. You should always try to be reducing loading time. There's a lot of evidence that people will click away or stop working with a site if it's taking too long to load. You should try and make sure that your website encourages exploration, that people kind of feel free, like, like they should explore and see what else other content is on there. Um, you should allow the opportunity for people to give feedback and uh, provide that right there. Uh, you should also be able to, if possible, you know, give feedback to users if they're making selections and things along those lines. Um, you should communicate consistently with what the message is and you should try and predict what the user wants and try and take that into account. Um, in order to really kind of think about the overall user experience, uh, you know, there's this kind of a natural course of steps that you can take, right? You can start uh, by conducting research, and that's kind of, we've talked about that through digital research and other aspects before. You then create a basic structure. You analyze content you already have. Uh, you create a site map, which is kind of a, a particular uh, inscription of the basic structure of the site. Uh, you build navigation features to make sure that people can get around the website. You create a layout for the actual pages themselves and you add in additional elements such as calls to action and informs and contacts information and then you define the overall visual design um, and it's interesting because that's like one of the last things you do and the reason why is because really everything else is part of what we're going to call information architecture right and adding in the visual design should be able to lay on you should be able to lay on a different visual designs onto any different information architecture you create so designing the information architecture first splits it away from the notion of the design itself. And we're gonna talk a lot more about design and visual design uh, in, in another lecture, right? Uh, but of course, once you've done all that, you also need to conduct some testing. So, you know, you should research the business, the users, and the technology, right? You figure out how to best use the technology that you want to use to connect the users to uh, the business, right? If done properly, this uh, could create a lot of data, but when you analyze it, you can discover uh, patterns, right? You can discover individual aspects of how users might interact with your technology and how they might work with your technology, right? Um, and with your business in general, right? And that's the more important aspect is using the technology not as an end in and of itself, but as a way to get the users to the business outcomes that you're trying to um, allow them to achieve, that you want to achieve. So creating the basic structure, right? You wanna create an information architecture. And what is an information architecture? It's the idea of putting down, before you even design the website, putting down all the content that you want to be in the website in the different places and relating those aspects to each other, right? It should be an illogical, clear, and familiar structure, right? So if for instance, you have a page about products then you might break them down into categories and then within those categories then have pages of individual products, right? Uh, it's really crucial the usability that you divide your, divide your information architecture correctly, right? Uh, and you can start to draw out a diagram and we'll talk about some tools to help you do that that can help you visualize what that basic structure might look like. Uh, in general, right, categories and pages should flow from broader to narrow and the information architecture should reflect that. The more intuitive the structure, the easier it is for the user to find what they want and for you as a, as, as a digital marketer to design content that will guide the user to achieve what you want. Okay. After you've done that, you've thought, you, and that's probably one of the biggest steps, right, is thinking through what the information architecture should look at. Then you should analyze the content, both of what you have already and what you want to create. And you want to make sure that the content that you're going to put up there reflects what the site should achieve, what the user wants, what makes that, that website unique, valuable, or different, and it should all be written in a uniform tone and language, right? So analyzing the content can help you understand where those aspects need to be worked on to a large extent. So now we have pieces of content, we have an information architecture, we haven't married them together yet, right? Uh, we have all the research and tools so we know that we have the content we need. What's the next step? Well, the next step is to actually start to take 
that information architecture and those contents and create an actual site map. And a site map is a visualized structural plan of how the website is laid out and organized. In some ways, it is the, the glue of taking the content and the information architecture and putting them together in a way that's actually physically implementable in a website, right? Um, and so, you know, here's a classic example. You have a home. You might have different categories underneath the home that you can look at. There may be a login option that gets you to other categories or other content. Um, and in that way, you have this ability to kind of navigate through the website. Um, and a lot of places actually will even put up snippets of their site map on their website in order to provide you, the user, with a clear path as to how the, the, the site map works. Um, Navigation is then necessary. So now you have your site map, you have your content up there, everything like that. Um, you should create navigational tools to help the user move through the website. One of the, one of the websites I think that does this really, really well is Amazon. So on Amazon, when you go to a particular um, product, right, it shows you not only where, what product you're on. So in this case, I'm browsing for Nintendo Switch, right? It shows me not only the exact product pages I'm on, but it also shows me uh, kind of how they're related to other content. So it shows other video game consoles across the top, right? So potential options. And then it has what we call breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs are little pieces of information that tell you how you got to where you were. So in this case, right, you go from any category to electronics, to video game consoles and accessories, to the Nintendo Switch, to the Nintendo Switch consoles, right? These are the breadcrumbs. They tell you how I got there. Now, in some cases, it might not be that I I went through each of these individually, I may have searched for Nintendo Switch and then clicked directly on one of these other categories, right? But it tells me how within their information architecture where this particular page lives, right? The other thing you should always have is an escape option. And usually this is the big logo in the upper left corner. You click it and you go back to the very beginning of the overall page, right? So uh, that's kind of an example of how to build good navigation into your user experience.